I am part of the group, the, the, the Baker Schultz group, that wants to put on a carbon tax and use the revenue from that to rebate in the form of um, dividends to the public. I think it's not if, going so well in Paris start, right now, Greg. Well, they weren't going to rebate the revenue. I mean, if they just want to raise taxes, but if you if you raise taxes on carbon and then give the money back to people, but, so that you're incentivizing a, a cleaner economy, right. but not really raising the tax burden on people. That's a very different story by, than what was going cleaner, on. By you mean lower France. CO, lower emissions? By cleaner, you mean lower he, CO2 emissions? Is that what? That's yeah, what exactly. Saying? Lower CO, <laughs> low, lower carbon emissions. Out of all the people in that Paris deal, it, it, you know the one country that actually has 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 actually had lower emissions and and actually been sort of uh, succeeding in, in bringing down emissions is, is not the ones you're talking about. It's, it's the United States, right? But, but you fault the Bush administration you know, for not, or the uh, Trump administration for not doing more on that, or? You know, there's a really a consensus of economists, both the right, left, and center, that putting a price on carbon is, is the right way to go. It's really not a partisan thing among the, the experts. Um, it's just that this administration basically okay. doesn't want to believe that there is a problem there. Um, and there is. And all the scientists tell us that there is, and okay. I'm more likely to believe this, the, the scientist's brain than the president's guts on okay. this issue. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and I've, I've heard all those arguments about the, about the consensus and scientists and, and, and everything else. Um, so in, in terms of, uh, of the, the corporate tax reform, so you, you think that's okay. I, I, with entitlements, that's a glaring omission from, I guess, from, from the Laffer and Moore book. They, they don't really take the administration to task for uh, for ignoring that. Is, isn't that one of the most important things that a, a, a conservative like you are, would, would, would mostly think we need to deal with? Absolutely. I think we have a, a looming fiscal imbalance that's going to unfold as my generation of baby boomers retires, and we need to do something about that. Now, the, the Laffer, <clears throat> the Laffer more view is that we're going to generate so much growth from these tax cuts that, that, we're, that all these problems are going to disappear. I don't believe that. I don't think most economists believe that. So I think we really need to take on this, this fiscal imbalance and yeah. figure out what the compromise is between lower benefits for my generation of baby I, I, boomers or higher taxes on the next generation of workers. We're, we're going to get to the, the China situation, too. But I, I also, you, you, you talk about not addressing the income inequality. And I just happened to look at the Bush tax cuts that when, when you were there. And I mean, the biggest criticism from the left is it went totally to the wealthy, the, the Bush tax cuts. And, oh, I, and I, 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 think, I think the way to, prov to deal with the income inequality thing is not to use the tax system to redistribute more. I think it's to provide more opportunities for people but, at the but, bottom but, of the economic but ladder. But when you were the and CEA that guy, focusing on things. But when you were there, the well, tax the, cuts of 2003 did exacerbate the, the, the income inequality with, or not? One of the big Bush initiatives was on education. And really, the, the, what we need to do is focus on the educational system to provide people the opportunity to climb the economic ladder, not to say, oh, you can't, you can't make it on your own. We need to provide people better opportunities. And that means focusing on education. That's okay. another thing this president has not thought about at all. Okay. The, uh, in terms of China, that, uh, you're, you're, at least you say you'll give the, 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 uh, the, the, that there might be a kernel of truth. In fact, here, I'm going to read directly. Trump in, uh to be fair to Trump and the other anti-globalization zealots, amid all their misinformation and bluster, is a kernel of truth, and that's that uh, the U.S. produces a lot of intellectual property, and that certain countries like China uh, obviously don't really respect that, or, or we fail to enforce the copyrights. Is that really only a kernel of of, uh, of the problem? It, it, it's not a big problem for you. What? How oh, would no, you, how would you address China? How would you address the China I th I issue? I think that is the most serious international trade issue that we face. That's very different what the, Bush, what the Trump administration is doing, which is focusing on the trade deficits, taking on a lot of our allies, putting tariffs on people in Canada and um, uh, in Europe. So I think we need, we need a much more nuanced approach that brings our allies together and focuses on, on bad acts by China and not, not putting all our trading partners in the same bucket and saying we're going to put tariffs on everything. I think that's extremely wrong-headed and it really insufficiently nuanced, insufficiently subtle. I think we can do better uh, than, than we're doing now.